What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're checking out some new hidden features found in iOS 14. I got a list of 14 of them actually, and we're gonna check them out, see what uh, some of the cool things that Apple's hiding around the new operating system that's coming out later this year. So let's get started. All right, so as I had mentioned with group messaging in my previous iOS 14 video, uh, we do have inline replies in messages, but that doesn't only apply to group messages. So if I go in like a regular message here, I can actually long press on this little reply right here. Click on reply and then I have the ability to reply in line to that message and I have a whole entire different thread right here. That's a pretty cool feature to have not only in group messages but in standard messages if you just want to kind of have an offshoot of a message uh, thread that you're sending to somebody. While we're in messages here, there is another cool feature that has to do with emoji. So if we type on the emoji icon there, you can see now that we have a search bar for emojis. I love this because I just, I hate searching, scrolling through the thing, trying to find emojis or having the words pick them up when you type. If you type fire, it shows a fire emoji. But this way, I can just search for fire and you can see that it pulls up fire, fire sign. We have fire truck. Anything related to fire actually pulls up in that little row right there. Uh, you can do the same thing for angry and then we have different emojis for that. So pretty cool way and easy way to find the emojis that you're looking for. Thankfully, that is in here. Oh my gosh, we've had it on Mac for how long? Yeah, I'm just glad that we have it here in the messages app on iOS 14. Another thing that I discussed in my previous video, and that link is down in the description for you if you wanna check out all of the new features. Uh, we do have picture in picture for um, video here. So if I open up a trailer, you can see, obviously I can scroll that around. But the cool thing about picture in picture here is the ability to resize it. So you can actually pinch on it and you can make it bigger or smaller, which is, you know, kind of nice. I don't know why you'd want to make it smaller because it's really hard to see, but we can make it bigger and we can move it around here just like you could with a regular picture in picture that I showed in the previous video. But this way we have the ability to expand the size of it. And I think that that is actually pretty cool. So picture in picture, not too bad. All right, so this next feature is kind of a very hidden feature and it requires me tapping on the back of the iPhone. So if I triple tap, you can see that I just took a screenshot without actually touching anything. And that is an access accessibility feature here. So if we go into the settings app here and we go to accessibility and then we go to touch and then at the bottom we have back tap. And this allows us to set up shortcuts for a double tap and a triple tap on the back side of your iPhone, which is freaking awesome. So right now I have a double tap set to home, a triple tap set to screenshot, but you can see we have a bunch of various options in here that you can choose from. So right now my double tap is set to home. So if I double tap, it'll send me back to the home screen. And with the double tap, it's kind of, uh, it, it does some accidental rejection thing. So it hasn't been 100% for me. The triple tap, however, you can see here that is just like immediate and it, I don't know. I think this double, this back tap feature on, on the iPhone is freaking awesome. Even though it's a hidden accessibility feature, just being able to triple tap and take a screenshot, that is just awesome. I don't know. I, I'm super impressed by, by the back tap feature and I'm glad that it's here on iOS 14. Now, another hidden little tidbit here with iOS 14 is in voice memos. And you know how you get the voice memos, you have like a long list and you have to scroll through what you're finding. Now we can actually organize them. So you see, I have a folder here. I can go into all recordings. I can tap on edit. I can select these two and I can press move. And then I can actually make a new folder. Let's just type in new save that and I moved those recordings to my new folder. So if I back out to the main screen, now I have that new folder that has the different recordings in it, which is pretty nice because, you know, like I said, it just it's an easy way to keep your voice memos organized, which definitely hasn't been fun in the past. So you can go in here and you can have like, you know, ones for at home or voice memos for work or, you know, what have you, just be able to organize them. I think that is a win all around. So if we jump over into the settings app here, you can see we have a category for home screen settings and this actually applies for your different apps that you download. So currently this is all that we have in home screen settings. We have new app downloads, go to the app library only, or you can add them to home screen. And we can also toggle on and off the ability to show notification badges 
in the app library. And if you're unfamiliar with the app library, it's kind of a new launcher where it stores all of your stuff. As you can see right here, I have all of my apps and I'm able to search through said apps in the app library because you do now have the ability to just hide like the settings app, I can remove that app from my home screen. Like I said, this settings thing applies to new apps that you download if you want them to go straight to your app library or if you want them to add a shortcut or the icon to the home screen as well. I actually kind of like that being in the app library because then I can go back and put it where I want to put it. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section. So this next one applies to the control center and you can actually find settings for it within the settings app under control center. We have sound recognition right here. And what this does is it adds a little icon right there in the bottom or however you have it organized that does sound recognition. So this will actually have your iPhone actively listening for things like a fire alarm, or we have things like a door knock. Uh, let me get back in here real quick. We have a dog, appliances, doorbell, water running, baby crying, etc. things like that. Now I can't imagine that this is going to be easy on your battery life because it's actively listening for noises using um, AI or machine learning or whatever they have going on this. And it actually tells you with inside of the settings app here, if we go into sound recognition and we go to settings there, you can see that it actually lists, your iPhone will continuously listen for certain sounds using on-device intelligent and will notify you when those sounds are recognized. So if it hears a door knock or if it hears a baby crying, you'll get a notification. And I mean, we haven't seen exactly how this works yet because currently it wasn't working for me. I had door knocks turned on when I, when I was knocking. I wasn't getting any kind of notification or anything like that, even when it's locked. I mean, that, that sounds like a door knock to me. So uh, currently this feature is not working at the moment, but it could be something useful in the future. Speaking of control center in here, we do have a little bed icon now, and that's uh, actually present in the control center settings. But if we tap that, it doesn't actually work at this moment, but what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to put your phone in do not disturb and dim your screen. So this is kind of like a bedtime uh, toggle that will kind of all encompassing like put everything in its modes where it's supposed to be when you're going to bed. Like I said, dims your screen, do not disturb. Would be cool if it toggled night mode as well if that wasn't on. I'm not sure how that's gonna work as the feature currently does nothing in here, but it is a nice little feature to have. Jumping inside of the reminders app, we do have a new little shortcut here on the main screen to add a new reminder. Previously, you could only do that from within like one of the categories here or within uh, one of these options up here, but now it's just on the main screen of the reminders app. You can jump in there, add a new reminder. Really nothing special, but uh, I mean, hey, I'll take it. So if you're one to use night mode on the iPhone here, let's go ahead and cover up my camera so I can get a better night mode shot here. Um, you can see that we can go in and specify like a, a maximum um, exposure time here. There we go. So once we hit this button here, you'll now see little crosshairs. You can see right there, uh, kind of hard to see, but they will tell you if you're lined up properly with all of the different shots that it's taking. So you kind of have a guide to make sure that you're holding steady enough to be able to take a photo. I'll do this one more time so you can see a little bit closer here. Uh, you can see those little crosshairs and as I'm getting offset, the yellow one is kind of moving away. So it's actually a nice feature to be able to make sure you're holding your phone steady enough to get the best possible night shot, which obviously is beneficial for your iPhone photography game. Now, if you're worried about privacy on your device here, we do have some new privacy features, one of which includes the Photos app. So let's jump into Instagram here and I'm gonna give it access to my photos for the first time here. So privacy for your photos, we can click continue and we can have it access to all of our photos or select photos. And so we can click on that and then be able to uh, click on select albums or select photos, different media types, and we can only give it access to specific things if we want. See, I'm checking the boxes for these different photos. Let's go to albums here. Um, we can give it access to different videos, which is, you know, it's a pretty cool feature if you don't want an app to be able to access all of your photos. Maybe you're downloading an app for one thing, right? You wanna, I don't know, turn yourself into a cat if there's an app called cat app. I, I don't know, you get the point here. You can access, give it access to just one photo on your device to do that so you know that all of the rest of the stuff that you might have going on in your phone uh, stays private and stays on your phone for that matter and not uploaded to somebody's server or somewhere else. So I guess it's a helpful feature if you wanna keep your photos on lockdown. Now this next one here has to do with selfies. So if we take a selfie here, 
and pull it up here, you can see that it automatically flips the photo for us, but we do have a setting here inside of the settings app uh, for the camera that will allow us to have mirrored selfies. And if we go into the side of the settings here, uh, you can turn on the mirrored selfie option. It's just listed right there under mirror front camera. And when we do that, when we take a selfie here, we get exactly what we saw inside of the preview, the viewfinder there on the camera. So if you want a mirrored selfie, well, you have the option for a mirrored selfie now. And one last little thing here with the app library, right? So you could actually previously go to like the different home screens here and you can long press and remove something from your home screen uh, using the icon, but you can also do that from right within the app library. So if we just long press on the app library, you see that we have uh, little delete buttons, little X's on the different icons here and I can press on that and remove it from the home screen. So you can actually do that right here from within the app library in case that's a better way for you to sort through things and be able to uh, do that there. Or just like I said, long press and tap on that little X button to be able to remove them right from the app library instead of from the entire home screen. But I mean, iOS 14, it's shaping up to be a pretty cool operating system. We're getting some features that, you know, honestly, they should have been there a long time ago, but at least we're getting them now. And I like how well rounded everything is. This wasn't a huge update in terms of like completely redesigning everything and whatever. I think that they made a lot of great improvements here within the operating system. I'm pretty stoked to see how uh, this develops over the coming months before it's released in the fall with the iPhone 12 or whatever ends up coming out later this year. But let me know what your favorite features are and if there are any hidden, hidden features that you discovered that I didn't mention in this video, please drop a comment below. Let me know. I'm looking forward to seeing all your responses down there. But uh, let me know what you think about iOS 14 in general. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can catch more iOS 14 videos when they drop in the near future. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I really do appreciate it. Once again, this is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.